All right, guys, so what we're doing is um, we're going to solve systems of equations, but first we need to know what a system is. Draw me a brace. You guys see what that looks like right there? Draw me a little brace. And then next to that brace, you're going to put two equations up there. I'm going to put up here y equals x minus 1. y equals x minus 1. And then the second one is y equals 3 minus x. Okay, what I just did was I wrote down two equations, right? One on top of the other. But you know what this little brace means? That these two equations are together. They're part of a system. We have to look at them, we have to look at them at the same time. So if I didn't have the brace, if that was gone, we're just talking about two separate equations. Now they're in a group. Do you guys remember any groups that we've talked about in this chapter? Pairs. Awesome, a set of ordered pairs. Remember, a set of ordered pairs has one of these braces at the beginning and end. That's a little different, but this one has one on the left side. Okay, if I ask you to graph the first equation, that top equation, you know, you'd get your slope, your y-intercept, or you make a little table, or you get the x and y-intercepts and graph it. What you're going to do with this system is you're going to graph both lines on the same coordinate plane and then see what happens with those two lines. Okay, um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do it the three ways. We're going to do one uh, using a table for each equation. So what I want us to do is we're going to focus on the top equation. We're going to make a table. So here's how my table looks. Put a little table here. Little table right there. Sorry, there you go. And uh, divide it in half. And you're going to put three um, divisions, we have our x and our y. Do you guys remember doing this? What values value should I pick for this equation? Yeah, what do you think? A negative positive value. Okay, I'm going to pick 0, a negative 2, and positive 3. Okay, that's what I picked. We're all going to do the same thing on your own. When you do these on your own, you can pick any numbers you want. Okay, so here, let me see if I can get them all. Okay, yeah. If x equals negative 2, what's negative 2 minus 1? Negative 3. Okay, that's, again, if you need to work it out, if you need to put here negative 2 minus 1 and then figure that out, that's fine. All right, what's 0 minus 1? Negative 1. So you just fill in that table. Give me that last one on your own. If you put in 3 for x, what do you get? Remember, we're working on the first equation. Okay, what do you get? Two. So you put a little two right there. How many ordered pairs do I have now? Three ordered pairs. I have negative two, negative three, zero, negative one, and three, two. So that's what I have. Okay, on that top right quadrant, you're going to draw a coordinate plane. And this one, go out five in each direction. Now listen, look, look what I'm going to do here. Um, I don't have a ruler. I don't necessarily need it, but use these little grid marks. So on the top right, use the grid marks to help you draw your line. So I'm just going to pick. So you can see that I use that line right there. And then because I, I was noticing that some of you weren't using your lines. And I'll show you how to do it right now. All right. You see how I use the blue line? To, dark, to make my own lines. Okay, but look at my tick marks. Look where I put them. Right there on the blue. You don't have to evenly space them. They're, they've been evenly spaced for you. So use those tick marks. Go out five. And if you need to go a little bit further, like I did, you could do that. Okay. Now, do you guys, oh, I'm going to give you back your quiz. Anyone not take the quiz? I think I'll just take it. Okay, did anyone notice on your quiz when I told you to make a table and put the points on the graph, do you guys notice what, the, what you should have formed when you put those three points? What should you have formed? A line. A line. I'm going to tell you right now, if you, put a t if you make a table on these problems and you don't get a line, something went wrong. It could be one thing went wrong, like... You just put the point where it didn't belong. Or it could be that you actually worked it out incorrectly. You need to fix it. 
All right, let's see if we can get these points on here. So I have negative 2, negative 3. Negative 2, negative 3. Put a point right there. Okay, then I have one at 0, negative 1. So, so far I have a line, but I hope that third one helps me. 3, 2. All right, do you think I'm going to get a line? Yes. Now, listen, it's important here on this lesson especially, use some straight edge, a ruler or your book or something to get you a straight line because you get messed up if you don't. So go ahead and connect them with the straight line, whatever it takes there, as I'm very nervously doing it without it. Okay. And don't forget to line so it has two arrowheads. Okay, so your line should look like mine. By the way, positive or negative? Positive. Positive, right? From left to right it goes, it's going up. Um, does anyone happen to know the slope? Don't worry, it's there for you. Okay, Kate? One. It's one. One over one. Okay, or just one. What's the y-intercept? What's the y-intercept? Yes, Olivia? Negative one. And what is the x-intercept? Positive one right there. You guys see that? All, that? all those pieces of info. Okay, great. What I want us to do now is we're going to go back to that, those two equations, and we're going to make a second table, this time for the y equals 3 minus x. Can you guys do that on your own? Make yourself a table. So you're going to do a, a second table. And you're going to put two columns, and you're going to pick three values. Don't get stressed out. We've talked about these three values a lot. So right here, let's see if yours match up mine. Pick yours. I'll give you a moment. Okay. Zero. We match, at least there, right? Then I'm going to pick, let's see, Danny picked one. Okay, and Morris picked negative two. Oh, man. Okay, yeah. I'm better at predicting the Super Bowl champion, 49ers, than I am at picking your numbers. Okay. Yeah, that's the Patriots. Yeah, they're, it's actually going to be a fair game. Anyway, uh, did you guys get your Y values? Did you get the Y values if you picked your X? If you haven't, go ahead and do that. Get your Y values. Remember, this is a second line. It's not the same as the other one. But these two lines go on the same coordinate plane because they're a system. Okay, I got one, two. Did anyone else get one, two? All right, so I'm going to put that now. One, two on my graph. One, two. Same, same coordinate plane as the uh, original line because they're a system, they go together. Zero, three, did anyone else get zero, three? Okay, good, zero, three. All right. Uh, and then we're gonna do, I got negative two, five. Did anyone else do negative two, five? Oh, nice. I knew Hannah got it, I, I should've said Hannah, I'm sorry. Okay, so I got those three points. Did anyone get negative one, four? Okay, so that's right here, right? Did anyone get 2, 1? Anyone do positive 2, 1? Okay. Did anyone do... Okay, no one else did that one. Oh, yeah, 0, 3. Wait, I'm starting to lose track here. 0, 3. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're good. All right, you should have at least three dots, three points. Go ahead and connect them. Draw a straight line. Can I give you a little hint on these graphs? The more points you have, true or false, the more points you have, the easier it is to graph. What do you think? The more points you have, the easier it is to draw a line. Oh my, oh, that's not the answer I wanted. How many of you say it's easier when you have more points? How many of you say it's not easier when you draw more points? Why is it easier when you draw more points? Somebody help me out. Um, there's less space in between the dots, so you have more time to refocus. Yeah, you keep you hit each dot 
you know, at a, at a more frequent interval. So you're just, just hitting the dots. It keeps you on, on track. All right, do you guys got this? Is this what you have? Okay, cool. Let's, let's talk about these lines real quick. The first line was this line right here. You guys see it? That line right there. Slope of one has its uh, X and Y intercepts. The second line, what's the slope of that guy? Mm. Negative one, because from left to right, it's going down. Okay, let me ask you this right here. Ben, this first line, technically, how many dots could I put for the first line? I'll give you a hint. Infinite, right? You know how many solutions there are for this first line? There's an infinite number of ordered pairs. Do you guys see on this line I have four, three? You guys see four, three? That's a solution. Do you guys also see negative two, negative three? Yep, that's an answer. So how many answers do I have on that first line? Say it. Infinite, right? Okay, look at the second line, the one we do secondly, the negative line. How many solutions do I have on that? Infinite, right? Because it's a line of infinite number of points. Now, this is what I was looking for. How many solutions do they share in common? They, all, they both have infinite number of points, but they share how many in common? How many? Use your finger to show me. They share how many? One point in common. Do you guys know what that point is? What is it? Three. Sorry. Right here's the origin. Yeah. Yeah, because both of their intersect. Right? Yeah, where do they intersect? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Where do they? I was going to say both of their x and y. Never mind. Nope. That's okay. I was thinking something. Else. Right? 2, 1. 2, 1. Look at this point right here. 2, 1. Label that. I think it's 2, 1 because you, you go right 2, then up 1. 2, 1 is so special. You know, if you made your, remember your table? Remember, do you guys remember your table? Did anyone pick two for the first table? Anyone pick positive two? I don't think we did, right? Because we did it together. Let's see what happens when we pick two. What do we get for that first one? If I pick two, what do you get for? You get one. All right, that's cool. Whatever. Look at the second table. If I pick positive, did anyone pick positive two for that one? Did anyone pick positive two for that one? No one did? Oh my. Yes, ma'am. Yep, Danny. What's three minus two? One. All right, guys, look at these two tables. What do they share in common? Okay, if I said pick any number in the world for the first table, any number in the world for the second table, you would get all these random numbers. Some of you would go extreme. Some of you would go very con like conservative. There's only one number that would get you the same thing. And what, what is that number? Two. two. One. Get two, one. Okay, that two, one is the solution to this system of equations. That means it's the only point that satisfies both equations. Okay, so two, one, I'm going to circle that guy right there and come back to the equations and then uh, finish this problem off. Oh, what did you Sorry. Circle? Two, one, that ordered pair on the graph. Yeah, just circle. That's my answer. And you're like, what do you mean my answer? Okay, look, two ones there. Just for emphasis right here, right? Remember the, remember the uh, equations? All right, let's see. Two, one. If x is two, what's y? One. If x is two on the second one, what's y? One. Which ordered pair fits both of these at the same time? Which ordered pair fits both of these equations at the same time? 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. That's my answer right here. I'll put a star by it. 2-1. That's special. That's all you're doing on these problems. Okay. Go to the... Wow. I thought you'd be more excited. The, is it Monday? It's not Monday. I don't get it. Okay. Um, she was like, all right, we'll consider it Monday. Let's do a second one here, guys. We're going to do it a little differently. Bottom left quadrant, bottom left quadrant. We'll do another problem here. And um, it's a system. 
Somebody tell me how I know I'm going to draw a system right now. Yeah, I just told you, but <laughs> something is a little more firm on that. Like this is how we. Yes, Morris. I have one. Bra I have one brace. Yep, I have one of those braces. All right, two equations: four x plus two y equals negative eight, and two x plus y equals two. All right, so we got four x plus two y equals negative eight, and two x plus y equals two. All right. We, on the last problem, made tables, okay? You need to be able to do that on your test on Friday, but you also need to be able to find your x and y intercepts. Okay, let's do it for the first equation. Okay, I'm circling that first one. That's the one we're going to deal with right now. How do you find the x-intercept or the y-intercept on any of these problems? Do you guys remember what to do? How do you find the x-intercept? Make y equal... Zero. Okay, here, here's what I'm going to do. X intercept, Y intercept. I want to find out the X intercept. So what do I make equal zero? Y. Okay, look at the first equation. 4X plus 2 times zero equals negative 8. So instead of y, I put in 0 because we said to find the x-intercept, make y equal 0. Okay, so really I get 4x. What's 2 times 0? Oh, that's nice. So really 4x equals negative 8. How do I solve for x? Sam? Divide both sides by 4. Divide both sides by 4. Thank you for saying both sides. So that means x equals? A negative 2, right? Because negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. There is an ordered pair that I just got there. What's that ordered pair I got there? Yes, sir? Negative 2, 0. Negative 2, 0. That's my x-intercept. I'm going to box that in because I'm going to use it for my answer. Okay. How do you find the y-intercept for any equation? Yes, Alex? You make, zero. You make x 0. Make x equal 0. Same equation. So here's same equation, 4 times 0 plus 2y equals negative 8. Same equation. All right, so what's 4 times 0? Zero? 0. Okay, I get 2y equals negative 8. How do I solve for y? Divide both sides by 2. y equals negative 4. I have another ordered pair. What is it? Somebody else. I have another order pair, a second order pair now. The usual suspects. Danny. <laughs> Zero, negative four. Zero, negative four. Good. Zero, negative four. Good job. Yay. I have two points. I can graph a line. How many points do I need for a line? At least two. So go ahead. Bottom right. Sorry. Uh, we'll go... Five again. Yeah, go five. Okay, use your lines, guys. They're there for a guide. As I've told you guys in the past, I'm not expecting perfection, especially when you have to draw the graph just with no, with no lines or very few lines. But your, your graphs here better be way better than your graphs that you do freehand. There shouldn't be much excuse for that. Just sir, I didn't do as well. Well, you're not using the lines well. All right, go ahead and put those two points on that coordinate plane. Can you put negative two, zero, and zero, negative four? So negative two, zero, and zero, negative four. Put those on there. Sorry? Yes, connect them with the line. Hopefully your points are right here. I'm going to make these bigger. Okay, these are my points right there, and I'm going to connect them with the line. Remember what I said, more points makes it easier, so let's see how I do on this one. I need a ruler big time, but... You want it? 
Yes, sir. And I flinched. I can't believe it. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I have that quality to make people academic. <laughs> yes, it's very academic. Do you mind if I hold it for a while? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, All right. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. Here's what I want you guys to do because this is review. This is not new how to graph a line using x and y intercepts. Go ahead and do that for the second equation. Get me the x and the y intercept for the second equation, and then graph those intercepts. So the second equation is the 2x plus y equals 2. Get the x and the y intercepts on that. Oh, for systems of equations, you only put one brace on the left side. Yep. So that's how you know. It's not a set of ordered pairs. It's not a relation. It's just two equations that are together in a special way. Let's see these special lines. This is cool because we have three different types of graphing and three different answers we will get with graphing. So we're going to see all three. And then I'll test you with one final problem. You may. OK, you may not. All right, did you guys get the x-intercepts of 1, 0? Sorry, x-intercept 1, 0, y-intercept 0, 2? Yes. All right, so 1, 0, I'm going to graph now. 1, 0, and 0, 2. And then using the ruler. Hey, ruler. Yay. All right, so here's my, here are my two lines. You guys have the same? Yeah. These two lines are parallel. parallel. And in fact, if you use your ruler well and you connect the dots well, it should pretty much look parallel like pretty perfectly. Okay, now, do they in, ever intersect? No. no. Okay, how many ordered pairs are on that first line we drew? Infinite. How many ordered pairs are on the second line? Infinite. How many ordered pairs do they share in common? Yeah. So on this system of equations, the first two equations that we dealt with, is there any ordered pair that will fit both of them at the same time? Uh, it's either 2, 1, or 1, 2, I can't remember. One of those. Sorry, um, on the, the problem we're just working on right now. Oh, no, no, no. I thought you were talking about the problem. Yeah, I, I did. Now that I, now that I look back, that may sound like that. Yes, ma'am? Anything? Yeah, are there any ordered pairs that will fit both of these lines at the same time? Would 0, 2, and negative 2, 0? Okay, it has to be just one ordered pair. Any? Any, guys? No. no. Okay, here's what we put for my solution. It's not a cop-out, but it's the truth. No solution. No solution. These two equations, you, you literally write no solution. These two lines will never intersect, and therefore there's nothing in common between the two. Like, never. I know. And your work has paid off. You, you told someone that these two trends have nothing to do with each other. And you were correct. And you were correct. Or you could have said they do have something in common, and here it is. That's what they have in common. By the way, guys, did you guys see it? These two lines on the first, first graphs, these two lines were, sorry, perpendicular. 
There's a 90 degree angle right there. And we know that their slopes are what? If they're perpendicular, the slopes were? 90 degrees. <laughs> Close, starts That's with an N. Right. Negative reciprocals of each other. All right, anyway, last one. Together, last one together. All right, here's, uh, turn the page. And top left again. Let's get our... Um, We're going to do another system here, and we're going to do these two equations. y equals 2x, did I say y equals? I am so sorry. That's, thankfully, we have an eraser. Yes, I made a mistake again. That happens. y plus 2x equals 2. That's what I meant. And 3y plus 6x equals 6. Did you have a question? Yeah. Top left of the back page. Okay, well, I'm there. I bled through. Okay, uh, oh. Uh, can someone grab that? And Or can you grab one? Danny, you can get one in here. And you can become famous while doing so. Do you want me to do yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> wow. Follow her. Yep, okay. Um, yeah, Danny, you're fine. It was only like two seconds. Can you tell us about the camera around? It's already turned around. It has a camera in the front and back. Sorry, guys. Hope you had a good hair day. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sewell would never do that. But I would. Okay, here we go. The third way to graph. So we use it. So we use a table. You can use a table to get points to put on a, on, on a graph to get a line. You can get your x and y intercepts. And the third way, probably the most efficient way, is to get the equations and slope intercept form. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get both of these into slope intercept form one at a time. So the first equation, all right, we're going to deal with that one first. How do I get it in slope intercept form? Do you guys remember what that form is? Hannah, what's the general form? Y equals, y equals X plus B. Good, M, X plus B. All right, is Y by itself here? Yes. So close, but there's something by it. So how do I get rid of that 2X? Subtract 2X from both sides. Okay, Y equals, what do we get if we subtract the 2X from both sides? In proper format. Negative 2x plus 2. Remember, you got to put it, you could say 2 minus 2x, but you switch those around. So I subtracted 2x from both sides. And then I got y equals negative 2x plus 2. All right, that's slope intercept form. Great. We can graph that. Go ahead and get your, on the top right, get your coordinate plane. Four in each direction. It's a little bit smaller than the others. What's my time right now, guys? 1040, all right. This will be our last one, okay? This will be the last one that I'll give you your homework. I can even start helping you on the first problem. Okay. Um, if I have my equation here, y equals 2x plus 2. Sorry, y equals 2x plus 2. Well, y equals negative 2x plus 2, right? That's the equation. Do you remember if I put a point, where do I put it first? 2. But where? What do you mean 2? Put it where? Well, what's that number right here? 2 is my b value, and my b value tells me my y-intercept. My y-intercept, OK? So on my graph, my first point is going to go at 2 on the y-axis. So that goes right here. That's my first point. That's the y-intercept. But then I had a slope of, anyone know what the slope was? Yep. Close. Oh, negative. negative two, right? Okay, here, I'm going to write this over here off to the side. Y, uh, the slope is negative two. 
Isn't that negative 2 over 1? Same thing as negative 2 over 1? All right, what's my rise over, over my run? I go up or down 2? Down 2. So here, we're going to start at our point. I'm going to go down 2 and then over to the right once. That's the second point right there. Do you see that slope? Down 2 over 1. Okay, now watch this, guys. This is going to be tough on the eyes. Watch what I'm going to do. I'll start at that first point I put, and I said negative 2 over positive 1, but you can also say positive 2 over negative 1. You're like, what? Okay, ready? Up 2 over 1 to the left. Right? I mean, can you do that? I hope you can. Sure. Okay. We'll go over that again on the next one. All right. So connect them with the line. <laughs> Sorry, that's my line right there. The slope is 2 over 1. And, guys, I'm going to verify something real quick. If you're looking up here at the board, if I start at this point and I go down 4 and I go over 2, let's see what that yields. One, two, three, four, one, two. So that's okay. Or I can go up four, two to the left. One, two, three, four, one, two. So I can do that. Am I okay with that? Wait, how did we get negative two again? Um, when we solved our equation, we subtracted two, so we got negative two x. That's my slope, magic okay. number. That's good. All right, get the second equation in slope intercept form and then stop. Don't do anything after you get slope intercept form. So get the 3y plus 6x equals 6 into slope intercept form. There you go. So what are you trying to solve for? Y. You're trying to get y by itself. So right now y has a 3 being multiplied by it and a 6x being added to it. The x out first and then the thing with the y? Yes. Get the 6x out of the way. This is a review of what we did on homework when we were trying to solve equations for y, getting the slope intercept form. Okay, how many of you subtracted 6x from both sides first? Good, because that's what you're supposed to do. You get, actually, there are other ways. No, no, no. Okay, no, not right now. 3y equals, how many of you put negative 6x plus 6? Good, that's the format you really want to have it in. And then you're like, wait, but y is not by itself. It's being multiplied by 3. What undoes multiplying by 3? I'm going to divide everything by 3, which should get me y equals negative 2x plus 2. Huh. Wait, did, have you ever been somewhere or heard something or done something where you felt like you did it before exactly that way? Or, deja vu. Wait, I just had deja vu again. Okay. Do you guys notice these two equations are the same? Yeah. I have two equations, right? And I, let me show you how to graph it. Uh, you do this and do, okay, you got, it's the same line. It has to be the same thing. How many times do these two lines intercept one another? Okay, here's what you're going to put. Is it just one time? No. So you don't just put one ordered pair. Is it no solution? No, because they intersect. We put this grammatically correct phrase. In, infinitely, infinitely many times. So we put infinitely many. Okay, that doesn't mean any answer is true. It means that there are infinitely many answers that are true. And then you're like, how does that work? There are infinitely many correct answers, and there are also infinitely many wrong answers. That's the hard part about wrapping your mind. Here's, here's what I'm going to say. Does zero two work? Does zero two work for both of these? Yeah. But does 1, 2 work for both of these? 1, 2 work for both of these. So you see how there's many? 
but there are also many that are not. Sir? Infinitely many, you say. Oh, I got it. I know. Oh, sorry. Well, that's the truth. Like, there are so many, there are infinite number of many. That's what you say. Yeah. I Last thing, guys. Here you go. It's homework. Oh, my. Yes. Numbers 4 through 10, even. Yes. Are you actually doing that? Yeah. Yes, it's four problems. Page 194. Page 194. Yes, come get your graph paper up here. This is your homework. What page is it? 194. Bye, Soma.